I was sitting at my desk and I minded my own business. But then there were two ladies that came around to my um, where I'm sitting at, and they were looking for the director. And then and I told them that the director leaves a lot earlier than that. And so um, it was around nine o'clock. I told them that the director leaves. Um, uh, there's no, no later than um, six. She's not here. They're like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, whatever it is you need, you probably need to email her. And um, they're like, we're trying to work here. <laughs> it's like, I looked at her uniform and I'm like, why would you, because you get paid $26 and working over here, you get paid 19 And I'm like, what? And one girl was dark skinned and one girl was light skinned, even though she was still lighter than me. But one girl uh, of the two girls that came around the corner, one was dark skin and one was light really really fair and um the one that was really really fair she's an officer in the jail and the lighter one was uh looked down and said i just need to work here i cannot continue to work over over work over there i said what west tower and i named the exact location where she works and she was just like, I just don't understand why they would be so mean to me. And why is it that the, and she was just like, especially because this girl, this woman is 51. I was like, I don't know how she found out the age of this particular woman that is causing her stress to where she's trying to look for other departments to work in. And I'm trying to encourage her or discourage her just because of the, uh, diff the difference in pay. I said, well, West Tower. So I called it right. So then she just ended up sharing all that information and I said you know what I was experiencing the same thing I just can't get why it is and I said it's just black women for the most part there were rude white men yes there was oh annoying white uh, women uh, very dismissive and then uh Mexican oh they say some off the wall stuff too but black women will just be bullies I had a younger girl trying to fight me, um, trying to set up something to where we could actually be, um, um, the fight would be displayed because she wanted it to be known. And I'm just like, how did I get caught up in this? And I'm just, and every day I come to work, I try to make it to where I speak as little as possible to the inmates, but the coworkers are the problem. And here, she, this young girl is, who looks about 20 something, um, just 10 years younger and um, more than 10 years younger. And she wants to relocate. And I was, and I said, oh, it's sometimes black women are trying to be the bullies. What is it about black women that see other black women and have no sense of camaraderie, no sense of companionship, no sense of um, compassion, but they have all it's it's a vicious hatred. It is a vicious, intentional bullying They They are cut. They are uh, coarse with their words and they cut you. I am a black woman and I am getting so pummeled by black women i'm getting accused i'm getting attacked i'm getting um where people report me i remember uh, applying lip gloss and they were like oh you're flirting with staff and i <laughs> oh in black there's some black men that'll come and i remember one guy approaching me but this was a different job and he came up to me and he had to be no less than five inches away from my face and he was talking directly into me eye to eye mount to mouth and he was just said i'm watching you i've been watching you and i'm observing you as soon as you come into the warehouse door i see you i see how you waving at everybody i see how you um um jawing with everyone you literally chit chat with every single person before you get, gather up your crew get your supplies and get on the aircrafts to clean them he was like, I don't know what your staff is doing, but I've been recording and I've been taking notes and I will, and I am compiling my information and I will be submitting it. I know your plan. I know what your tactics are. You're not going to get to me. He was just vehemently trying to impress upon me that I should carry fear when I see him. I actually had seen him at least once before. I had been working there already about a good seven, eight months. And he was just like, um, but to be honest with you, I think because I see him, but he don't really say nothing. So 
I mean, it's mutual. Like if people are like, hey, what's up? I remember this girl always started the conversation like, wow, your skin is so popping. What do you use? Um, she's just like, I just love your cheeks. She's, um, she um, said she loved how my skin was smooth. And I was told her like I'm wearing a covering um, makeup and I really don't have pimples. But um, it's, I think it's the the hue of the makeup that really um, hid hyperpigmentation or whatever. But she was like, oh, girl, just take this coming. You're just really pretty. I was like, thank you. Um, so I'll ha- that's a five minute conversation. Another guy, he was like, ah, here you come smiling. Yet it's nine o'clock at night and we're about to do it. Um, uh, I think we work. I think we work eight hours. Maybe it was 10, 10 hour shifts. And he was just cracking. Jo- but the gentleman who f- said he was compiling information about me, now that I look back, He could have just been annoyed that I did an exchange with him, but it takes two. I am the kind of person I I can talk to perfectly good strangers because of their socks, because of, oh, they're dropping off their mail as well. I mean, what? We have that in common. It takes very little. It takes very little. But for him to say that he has been watching me and what that is, it's not just weird. It's unfair to himself for him to be watching me in my joy and to be miserable why would you do that to yourself you I'm not the cause of that putting my name on your mess whack anyway back to these two young women the dark skin girl that escorted her back to the clerk's office clerk department whichever you we we didn't we not I want to see them again and say hey because while I was there, I was just like, yeah, I don't know why they'd be bullying. And I called the na- the name of the woman who is her, um, her, her training officer. And, and I began to speak like her because that, um, and she was just like, oh my God, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Like, yeah, that, that particular black training officer is always on the phone, but we work the night shift. So if you, if you on the phone, but you talking about, um, this is an ad and, but you, her training officer was my training officer and her training officer gave me five points of disc of negativity on my report and said, I don't take, <laughs> I don't take information. Well, I don't take correction. Well, I don't, um, um, execute any instructions that given them to me. I'm slow to respond, everything bad. And I was just like, man, I am horrible. But I think these are also points where if these were all true, what kept her as a training officer to be able to bring it to my attention so that we can, as a staff, execute um, a, a better performance. But she was just like, no, nah, that's you. This is what I'm observing. And I think she took her role as I'm going to do my, uh, I'm going to tell y'all, but as far as like trying to see it in you, that's not my problem. I was like, okay, cool. So, um, um, I don't think that any of those comments were true. And I remember, um, somebody trying to wave at me and they came into the area where I was standing and she told them to get out. These, those two guys were, um, older than me, at least 20 years. And they're like, Oh, look, you're being trained. Make sure you do well. She's like, y'all need to get out of here. And that training, uh, those two men looked at the training officer. They were like, we've been, I've been here 10 years. The other guy said 16. And he was like, I've never been told to get out of here. He's like, he's like, I know my mother and I know that she doesn't work here. So help me to understand what made you get into that role right now. She was like, y'all better get out of here now. (laughs) I'm laughing, but I was really, I was, my mouth was open at the time. I was like, what? Like as an adult, like a bat could have wrote, I don't know. But I just, I was like, what am I experiencing? Anyway. I also told these two girls that when I talk to my children, I say, hey, whenever, am I going to open up this bag of brittle? (laughs) I tell my two children, I just, that you'll be foolish to have a job with all the complaints that I bring home and I have to train them and it can't be just me. If I don't have an entrepreneurship role right now, uh, I do, but it's not, um, I do. And this is, but it's a side hustle. So if I, once I bring it to the main stage, when I bring it to center stage, then I'll think I'll be able to teach them better. But I do not mind bringing, delivering my kids over and under someone who is actually making the amount of money or uh, producing the amount of work or or, or uh, executing the, the skills that I want my kids to inculcate. So um, 
very open to uh, my kids being coached at this age, being trained, being influenced, being exposed by actual business owners. I got to get up there um, and hustle. I got to prepare the night before when it comes down to my clothes, when it comes down to my mindset, I have to recite to myself what my goal is. I have to look over these bills and say, you will get paid and it will be out of today's work and working physically hard is not the same as working um, uh, intellectually hard. So um, I really want them to stray away from, oh, I got to put my hands on it. Well, in a, in a way, in a way, uh, you, you don't have to be sweating necessarily. But um, I told that to my children and uh, to those two girls. Um, um, and they were like, but I'm just tired and I am stressed. And a lot of times I feel scared coming to that floor because I know that's where my trainer is and I have to work beside my trainer because I'm I'm in this probationary period what I didn't tell them is that we have to be the light in the darkness that woman is terrible that particular training officer has recovered uh from cancer on two separate um, times in her life but yet she has the audacity to be so piercely mean with her words and people like myself and also that um, these two women, if it's because I uh, it's because of our the lack of this particular characteristic trait. And please put in the comments what you think. It's because of this particular lack of um, absence of this characteristic trait that I feel we are targeted by other black women. So it's just not in me. To comment back, to speak back, to diss and to score on somebody, start roasting somebody. I haven't been trained in that. I'm now I haven't had it a lot to me, so I've not been used to it. What is going on between the di- between in the in this black sisterhood? Like, is there a sisterhood in the sisterhood? It is okay. To take my tongue and slice you, cut you down. Why are these women so mean? Even this girl that was hugging me every morning. And every morning, just at the beginning of the shift. Um, I remember sweeping and I said, I remember sweeping the floor. And I remember she said something when other women had visited the floor. Um, she, um, I got, I got, I wish I remember what I said. Cause I, cause I do like to take responsibility for what I've said or what I've done, what I, what I contributed to, how much I contributed to the outcome. But this girl said, Oh, um, that's why I don't nobody like you and don't like being around you. And they think you stuck up. And I was like, what? And the problem that, um, and, and part of that problem is because I, I don't know how I said the uh, I don't know what and how I said the first comment um, that made her say that. But um, I do know that I didn't match how I was talking. I didn't match how I was talking in the eyes of others. And I and I and, it, and I probably wouldn't match. And, and what I mean is. I talk like I'm pretty. I talk like I'm so smart and I know it all. And I can, um, I don't know about know it all. I definitely have times where I share um, and I say things not just in a humble way, in a truthful way. And it comes out it, and, it, and I just have to tap out of these conversations or of these topics or whichever. I can't contribute to the conversation. But there's just some t- topics where I come off as the, I know it all. But in those areas, I know what I'm talking about. I, that's just how I talk when I know what I'm talking about. But I'm so quick. I am so conscious of how others are b- perceiving me. Even when I'm silent, even when I'm walking, even when I'm, especially when I'm talking. I take pride in how I'm saying something what, as I'm coming off. It is so important. It is a value of me to use the correct word. And once I hear a word, once I hear a term, I adopt, I constantly adopt terms, words to, to properly express myself correctly, accurately. 
I rarely take back unless I'm beating myself up in my head. I rarely take that back. I rarely take that back. I almost feel like I love beating myself up. But that's a separate subject. When I'm talking to someone in the front of in the presence of anyone else outside of myself, I am constantly using the correct term, the appropriate term, the right word. And a lot of times because I also simultaneously in life always adopt words, terms to accurately express myself appropriately so I don't give off a different meaning and I deprive the other person of mis understanding misinterpreting what my mission is what my what my point is sometimes insecure people all they hear is oh she's trying to talk like she know it no that's what your insecurity is making you hear the filter was dirty that's why you got a dirty product no it has nothing to do with me nothing and responding to those kind of people that that's for what for what? <sighs> what I should have said to those two women, because what I did say is, yes, black women can be so um, can be um, hard as critics. But there's another uh, not critics. Um, they I mean, bullies not can be. They are. They are except for and I started calling off some names and then this girl started when I'd say first off she is um not just yellow she is she she almost has the complexion of um albinoism but um she's she was that fair she wasn't um yellow she was almost to where she was more like a manila co- color super pretty girl however once I started naming off these two black women I told her uh, one of them starts with a D. The other one starts with a J. And so um, when I said the D uh, name, she's like, oh, my God, I love her. She smiled. And this girl almost turned uh, like a cherry color in her cheeks. She was like, oh. And then I said the J name. And I said, that girl been uh, working there for um, more than uh, 15 years. She said, oh, she is so nice. Anytime I have a question, I just go to her and she just answers. And I just like, yes. It's those kind of people I can come to. But with the D lady, I when I go, I, I, I told the, the light-skinned girl, when I work with the um, D officer, she uh, inspired me because the way that she is as a person, there was something about her. Because even when I was at the printer, printer I was like, what kind of machine is this? It should just, I should just be able to open up the snap, put this paper on here and then print. And I was just like, what? And she was directing me from afar, but I couldn't follow her directions. And then, and I was like, what is my deal? She came over and didn't have, a, if it were anybody else, they would have called me a fool. They would have given me the eye and looked at me. And I just have to be, and I, it, that working over there made me so sensitive about girl, just do it by yourself. And so I appreciated this experience in my life because I knew God was aware. Just learn things by yourself. And this is how you'll learn. But there were there were people there. There were people there. And I had to value them. But I had to I had to appreciate them and stay connected with them and then go to them. And um, but I had to learn from her, too. She is so patient as a person. Even when she's talk, even when you're talking, she's looking you dead in your eye and she's listening to you. So don't waste her time. There are plenty of things to be done that they require these um, county workers to execute within their um, eight hour shift. And you will get penalized if you don't. But um, she, she was so far ahead of me in that particular area that I was I just had to watch her and I was in awe and I and I figured out it's patience she has patience and um I appreciated how she she has patience but how she dealt with me was so kind so she was also and I and um and I have kindness but kindness and patience is such a beautiful um combination that wow really wow I really really appreciated her and meeting someone like that because she is she just stood out but she also was further further than me in that area and I said I got to and I didn't want to pray for patience but I said "Mm -mm." 
I got to I got to have this combo though. I got to have it. It's such a good quality. I know what it feels like to receive it. And I would love to bless other people as I walk along this earth. And so that was so awesome. And so I told this to this uh, light skin girl that's trying to become a clerk. I said, um, those two women, that's, those are people that you can definitely rely on. She said, yeah, she said, but that's not enough. And there's a, there are um, days and, um, there are shifts and, and, um, just days go by and I just don't get to see them and I can't work with them. And it's just, it's just too stressful. I'm making this video, but I did not say this to them. And I do have the ability to recommend somebody else do it, but I haven't done it. I was demoted and um but it was a punishment but the punishment was contingent on um improve your uh, arrival time like come ahead of time or at least on time and then uh, apply for the position again and then you'll be reinstated back to an officer man the day i was demoted i was like Whew! because working there was not an env a good environment it was Oh, it's about to rain, so it's actually started raining, so I gotta take these cases of water in. I haven't done it, but I do know that I need to teach my kids how to speak back, how to talk back, and still honor the Lord. Now, we need to honor our mother and our father, but when we are talking to other people, other people say something to us, we need to learn how to talk back. When I say we need to learn how to talk back and I still honor the Lord, we need to learn how to speak up and how to respond. I am no longer in that area. And I did not even try. At least just to have good standing. Try. And I still don't even want to apply back to that position. Because it was so. Why are people talking to you like this? Now that I know they wouldn't be able to talk to me like this. If we weren't at work. Now you know what you're supposed to do. Now why would you even say that? Oh, why you talk like that? Why do you do And this is management. These are your superiors. And I'm like, we're the same age and you're younger than me or you're old. They do not care. They, they love it. And this is the environment for people like this. This is the environment for people to talk crazy to you. It is not the environment for people that don't have no kind of patience or tolerance to get to. Because you would be triggered every single day. But, um... Superiors talk like that and those on your level talk like this to where they're just, anyway, I'm the kind of person that's still going to, when I see her again, suggest that she stay there and be the light. Sucking it in and not saying anything doesn't do us or them any, any service. We've got to put praises in him, psalms and hymnals in our mouths, just like the scripture says. But learning how to, oh my God, there's ways that Jesus talked back to the disciples when they were asking this. And he was like, oh, you still don't know? Have you not heard? I mean, who do you think I am? Who do they say I am? The, the ways that they, the uh, disciples asked him after all others had gone. And yet he would still say things, no matter what Bible version he still had this expectation from them to where they should have, it should have, they should have caught on, but they asked because they didn't. And that's the position I'm in. That's the position others are in. When they come to Sapir, they ask these questions. But at this particular job, you're an idiot for asking. They're not like, oh, let me help you. Oh, let me tell you. No, let me show you. And your, and your fellow uh, co-workers on your level. <laughs> it's crazy but you get paid 27 an hour so it's so good right but i just man there's just some things that are so good but they also kill you at the same time so i don't know i just you but the bible also says say once say twice and after that the third time you know that that person is condemned <sighs> Oh, it's too much. I'm not even going to suggest because I know I left and I'm still where I'm at. And I keep telling myself, at least let me keep my sanity. At least let me not be mumbling back and forth in my mind about conversations where I would have said something crazy. I would have said something different if it was outside, if we was by my car. 
Let's not give our crowns to people that are going straight to hell. Let's not give our heavenly crown to people that's on their way to hell. They're not worth it. All glory be to God. Y'all have a good day.